In this video, I'm going to show you how to transform or morph between two different geometries using geometry nodes. To begin, I'm going to create a new scene. I'm going to select and delete everything, and we're going to need some geometry to morph between. So one is going to be the Suzanne model, and another will be a sphere. And for this, you could actually use any mesh you want, but just to do it quickly in the tutorial, I'm going to use these two. Next, I'm going to just create a mesh that we'll put our geometry nodes onto. And I'm going to go to the geometry node tab, click new and pin this. All right. So the first thing we want to do is get these two meshes in here. Uh, and we can use this. I'll start with the sphere as the base. And what we're going to do is distribute points onto the faces and I'll just do geometry here. So we're not actually going to use the, the original plane mesh at all. We're just going to create our own, um, our own, uh, um, geometry for it. All right. So, uh, I, I generally prefer Poisson disc over random just cause I like the non overlapping particles and I just up the particle count as well as the minimum distance. Okay, something like this. And we're also gonna do the same exact thing onto the Suzanne model. So you can see if I were to plug this in here, we have Suzanne. If we have this one, we have the sphere. So now we're gonna try and morph between the two. An easy way to do that is to do a tr transfer attribute. So here I'm going to take the, the mesh of our Suzanne, which we could see here, and we're going to want the attribute to be changed to actually be the, the position of each vertex or each particle in here. So to do that, I am going to add a position node and I'll select that into attribute. And actually in transfer attribute, we want to do a vector because, um, position is a vector three. And we also want to do index. So we're actually going to uh, go through each individual index. And we'll keep this to be point as well. All right, so then what we're going to do is we're going to do a set position. So this doesn't actually change it right now. If you were to change each point individually, you could. So like, for example, uh, oh, actually we don't want to do offset. We want to do position. So if we do this, we're actually taking the points that were distributed onto the sphere, but we're positioning them in the position of where the Suzanne model would be. So what we want to do is find a way to transition between the two. And to do that, we're going to, I'm going to take a, a mixed RGB node. You could also do this with some vector math, but uh, it's a little quicker and easier. And we actually want to do this position into this position. And we can do this. So now we can actually use a slider to go between the two. Uh, I generally don't like overlapping noodles or strings or lines, uh, just because it becomes a little hard to read. So I'm going to just duplicate this and put it here. I think that's a little easier to read. Um, and then lastly, right now we have these points, but uh, if we were to try and render, uh, nothing would appear. So we actually want to uh, instance, um, instance on points a geometry. So we actually need another uh, mesh and we can choose whatever we like here. I'll just do a a sorry, a casahedron with a subdivision of one, just because it's going to be quite small. And then I'm going to just name this particle, and I'll drag this here, and this will be what we're instancing. And it's quite huge right now, so I'm actually going to just go into edit mode and scale it down, and I'm going to put a material on it. And I'll just bump the mission to something like 10 and choose a color. And uh, just for effect, I'll add bloom. So now we have something that looks like this. 
going to make the background black as well. And I could go ahead and tweak the particles further or tweak the colors however I like. Um, but essentially now we have this value that we can transform between Suzanne and the sphere. Um, for some models like Suzanne right now, you, you can see that it's not very legible. So I'm going to actually up the particle count and I'm going to just use a value node to have the same density between both the sphere and the Suzanne model. And I think we had 200 before, but we could like bump it up to 500. Um, I'm gonna name this particle, particle count. And maybe we also do one for uh, min distance. And we had 0.1 on the min distance for these before. Uh, we could do kind of 0.05, and now we, we, you see we have a very, um, very dense mesh. And we could easily keyframe this and animate it further. That's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing. Have a good day.